Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to talk about 10 amazing ways you can automate your life with Python. Myself, Muhammad Zubair, and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid IT pro really fast. So without any further ado, let's get started. Well, Python is one of the most used programming language nowadays. Because of its easy syntax and adaptability, people prefer to use it for almost any purpose. Besides traditional development, researchers prefer to use Python for data science projects as well. That is why Python is also known as the language of data sciences. Other than that, you will see Python playing its part in web applications, mobile applications, desktop applications, or you name anything. Other than that, we can use Python to automate our life with simple and easy Python-based projects. In this video, I'll talk about 10 such projects that you should consider. So let's begin. Number 1. Currency Converter By the name of it, you might think that it is a very beginner level project where you just need to define the currency values in your variables and then you can simply convert any currency. But no, we know that currency rates changes every day, so we need something dynamic for this solution. Python can help us to solve this problem. We can use Python libraries to build a currency converter and the libraries we need for this project are requests, forex and tkinter. The request library will be used to send the HTTP request using Python and in response it will bring the response object with all the needed data. Forex library will be used to have all the currency rates and other than that, it also provides other features and information like Bitcoin prices for all the currencies, etc. Then comes the tkinter library. Well, this is a library of Python that you can use to design your interface. And it's a standard interface that gets shipped with Python. So use these libraries to develop your first Python project to automate currency conversion process. On number two, we have sentiment analysis. Well, if you have an e-commerce store or business, you need a sentiment analysis project to increase your sales and further understand the customer's feedback on your store. Sentiment analysis is one of the most used and trending projects that are in use in many fields. Natural language processing, text analysis, computational linguistics, etc. gets used for this. Other than the e-commerce, you can use this project for reviews and poll systems, etc. Some of the libraries that you will need for this project are NLTK, and scikit-learn. NLTK will give you the complete solutions regarding natural language processing as it will help you with everything. For example, splitting the paragraphs into sentences and then into words and understanding the grammar of the sentences and extracting the meaning out of them. Then comes scikit-learn. Well, this is a library of Python that you will also see in many machine learning and deep learning projects. Well, this library will offer you various classification, regression, and clustering machine learning models. And let's see what do we have on number three. Customer segmentation. So as we have used the previous project for better user semantics, let's have a project for customer segmentation. Segmentation is a process of dividing the customer based on common characteristics or features. For example, let's say you have customers from all sorts of ethnicities places and from all age groups. With the help of segmentation, you can find out which group is generating more profits for you and by doing so, you can concentrate on that particular group and you can find out the problem that are forcing other groups to generate fewer profits for you. Other than that, there are many other ways that you can use to segment your customers. For example, you can segment them on the base of products, spending on each trip to your store, etc. For this particular project, you will need NumPy, Pandas, and scikit-learn libraries. NumPy will be used to support the large dataset with multidimensional arrays and matrices. Along with that, it will also help you to perform different mathematical operations on your arrays. Scikit-learn will be used to offer support for multidimensional data and perform different operations on matrices. And again, scikit-learn will offer you to have different classification, regression, and clustering models. In the end, we can use matplotlib to visualize our results to better understand our customer segmentations. Number four, Twitter bot. How cool it would be if your Twitter account can tweet, retweet, 
like follow and unfollow other accounts automatically well you can do all of this with the help of a twitter bot for this purpose you need to have two python libraries as tweepy and tkinter tweepy will be used to access the twitter api and enable python to interact with the twitter and use its api and you may know by now that tkinter will be used to create a graphical user interface for the user on number five we have a web crawler well if you can do the twitter bot project then this one will be very easy for you a web crawler also called as crawler is a bot based on the internet and it browses the world wide web automatically for the web indexing people use a web crawler to make sure they have the updated and latest content on their websites you can also create one for you there are many other uses for web crawlers as well for example it copy the pages for the processing and then the search engines indexes those pages so that user can search more efficiently scrappy and beautiful soap are the libraries that you will need for this kind of project scrappy is a python based framework that can also be used to extract the data using the apis and beautiful soap library will be responsible for parsing your html and xml documents and it makes a tree for the parsed pages that can extract useful data from the html and becomes useful for web scrapping on number six we have sending emails well sending emails is another task that can be automated with python let's say you are supposed to send hundreds of email every day well python has a library called as smtp lib and this library will cover this problem for you this library uses a simple mail transfer protocol to send out emails other than this library you need a gmail account and it is recommended to create a new gmail account for this purpose because you will also have to allow less secure app access for this particular project so it is better not to use your personal account for this on number seven we have google search automation well google search is a thing that we all do every day how cool it would be to automate our google searches as well for example you search every day about the seo performance of your company or you collect some data every day all of this can be automated and for that purpose we have a library in python called as google search this can save time for you especially if you are searching for exactly the same keywords on google every day with a little bit of creativity your boring life stuff can be really fun and automated on number eight we have sent files to multiple servers and cloud storage system well let's say you are supposed to copy files across multiple servers then upload them on a servers download them using the file transfer protocol and repeatedly manage the backups and let's say you are supposed to do all of these tasks every day monotonously well python can help you automate all these tasks and save you a lot of time this is a bit of an advanced level project so be sure if you want to go for it there will be some libraries that will be used for this kind of project first one is paramico this is a library that will handle the ssh connections in python and it can transfer files to remote servers using the sftp protocol then comes boto3 again it's a python based library and it is used for interaction with amazon web services and boto3 can be used to upload file to aws s3 which is a cloud storage system so let's say if you want to upload your files on aws cloud storage system you have to use boto3 now let's say you want to upload your files to dropbox well for that purpose we have dropbox api again it's a library that is based on python and it gets used for the interaction with the dropbox cloud storage service it can be used to upload files to dropbox then comes google cloud storage well python again has a library for google cloud storage and again it's used for the interaction with google cloud storage it can be used to upload files very easily there is one more library that you should consider and that is paramico sftp it is an extension of paramico that we have discussed already but it specifically provides the sftp functionality for uploading files to remote servers so again this is a bit of advanced level project so be sure if you want to go for it on number nine we have internet of things well the internet of things is made up of different devices that are connected to the internet and allows them to communicate with each other not only that you can control all of them remotely air conditioners microwave ovens in your home are example of internet of things as you can easily manage and control your home devices from your phone or remotely why not have your own made internet of things project 
For this project, you will need Python libraries like PyUSB, Flask, Pebble, etc. To automate your interactions with your connected devices, you can have a script written in Python. For a start, you can create a project that can include your home lights and small appliances. So go ahead and enjoy this project. At last, we have Price Tracker. Well, if you like to shop online now and then, and let's say you want to purchase your favorite product at the lowest price. For that, there are two ways that you can follow. Either you can check for the prices again and again manually, or you can create a small program that can do the job for you. Fortunately, Python can help you to do that, and you can create a small project. For that, you need to make an API call using the simple Python script that will keep checking the prices after a certain interval of time. For this, you need to use the beautiful SOAP library to make the network calls. Along with it, you need to use the request library. And as you know by now, that request library can be used to make HTTP requests to Google search page and retrieve the results. So start working on this automation task, sit back and enjoy, as now this project will look for the minimal price for you for your favorite product. And that brings me to the end of this particular video. I hope now that now you have an idea that what type and what projects you can consider to automate your life. And I hope now that you must have liked watching this video. If that is the case, please leave a like, subscribe and press the bell icon. I'll get back to you in the next video. Till then, take care.